New this morning, there's a street sign repair job waiting for Fargo Street's crews today after an overnight crash on the city's south side. Fargo police tell Valley News Live that right around 2 a.m., a driver hit a parked pickup, which then was pushed into a light pole. Take a look at this video. A lot of damage. 32-year-old Lockerman Ray of Fargo was arrested for DUI. No one was hurt in the crash. North Dakota's new Medicaid fraud unit has filed charges in its first case. State Attorney General Wayne Stangham says that involved the theft of narcotics at a long-term care facility in Pembina County. A 32-year-old woman is charged with theft of prescription medication and reckless endangerment. The defendant was a licensed practical nurse at Borg Pioneer Memorial Home in 2017 when the alleged crime happened. The nurse was fired after being accused of diverting prescription pain medication intended for residents and then substituting patient pain medicine with over-the-counter medications. Clay County Sheriff Mark Emting says his jail's population has now been cut in half to help stop the spread of the coronavirus. He says about 60 low-risk inmates have been released and most have promised to show up to future court dates. Two of the three inmates are finishing their sentences via ankle monitors. Five were given credit for time served and the rest were low-level bails. Nine minutes before seven. Let's get a check of that first alert storm team forecast. And Lisa, winter is not letting go of us, is it? It isn't. We've got some light snow that's been falling. And then on top of that, some real cold here this morning. We are down into the single digits in a lot of spots here. And our low temperatures so far uh, have been quite low. Grand Forks, six degrees. I put a little star, a little asterisk there to show that we broke a record. Our record today was eight degrees and we've dipped down two degrees below that. That's how cold it is for a record low. Same thing down in Sisseton, tied a record there or hit the record at 17 uh, for you in the Sisseton area. So some real cold around the region. Several locations again dipping down into the single digits. Fargo's record is 12, so we were a few degrees above that. So far, we could see that change. Here's a look at your radar right now. Still getting the snow, especially on the eastern side of the FM Metro, basically along I-29 and east from there is the better bet. As this continues to move south and east, it'll move more into Clay County and Minnesota and affect our communities there and then more spotty snow showers popping up here that may be impacting us this morning overall though we're watching the chances dwindling it's not as widespread as it was yesterday and there's still some pockets though over by oaks into dickey county seeing some of that snow up to the north as well uh, we're seeing some a little bit of snow shower activity too uh, but it's going to be winding down here today we're currently at two and a half miles visibility in fargo less than two in detroit lakes our winds not so strong but still out of that same direction bringing us that cooler air and keeping our temperatures on the low side. We since bumped up to seven in Grand Forks so on the rise there it's 18 in Fargo we're seeing a little bit milder number there too but still frigid you're going to still need that winter weather gear I know a lot of people have tried to put it away recently but uh, this morning you'll want to bundle up if you're heading outdoors and watch out for those slick roads here's a look at our uh, first alert sky cam right now not much uh, looking as uh, not looking much like spring as what I'm trying to say. We're still seeing some flakes flying around on our sky cam. So today we'll watch the chances for snow wind down and we'll see those temperatures start to rise. We'll get to about 32 today in Fargo around the four o'clock hour. I think we'll even warm above that to 34 here today. Uh, so improving slightly. We really see that improvement take over by the end of the week and the weekend. We're drying out to no real shots of moisture here uh, after today over the next seven days with a high of 59 on Saturday. And now for a look at traffic, here's Devin Fry with the Valley. Today's traffic on the move. Thanks, Lisa. We are turning on to I-94 to finish up this hour. We are going to be heading west toward Bismarck. Overall, the road conditions this morning, the snow's really been sticking around on our side roads. Now, the main places where I've seen it are the 13th Avenue, 25th Street, University Drive, those kind of roadways that haven't really seen much travel this morning. Now, those are already fairly lightly traveled when our traffic flow is normal, but it's been lighter for the past few weeks. And so that's really affecting how much snowfall is still on the roads right now. You can see even on the interstates, the road conditions are sloppy. So on the side roads, it's even worse. So just make sure to give yourself plenty of extra time when, uh, to get to your destination and also to be able to stop at intersections and things like that. The intersections especially are pretty slick. So just make sure to give yourself plenty of extra time, take things slow, and you should arrive to your destination safely. 
Overall though, the road conditions are improving slightly as the traffic flow becomes more and more apparent. So good news, it's gonna be getting better as the day goes on. Now, what day is today? It is Taco Tuesday, so I'll lay the day at Taco John's. For your traffic on the move, I'm Devin Fry. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum says he'll make a decision this week about whether or not to keep most businesses closed to help contain the coronavirus. A ninth person has died from COVID-19 and 23 more people have tested positive, bringing the state total now to 331. The Fargo Dome in North Fargo is staged for any possible surge in coronavirus cases. Take a look at this. There are about 200 cots set up in case area hospitals are suddenly overwhelmed with COVID-19 cases and need space for other patients. The Dome is one of two North Dakota facilities set up to handle a large number of cases. The other is in Bismarck at the University of Mary. Trinity Health in Minot is furloughing about 350 employees as the health system deals with the financial costs of the coronavirus pandemic. That's about 12% of Trinity's 2,800 member workforce. Furloughs do not include essential staff needed for patient care. Executive salaries are being cut by 20% and middle management staff by 10%. Trinity's president and CEO says they've seen a 50% drop in overall business because of state and federal advisories to cancel non-urgent medical appointments to slow the spread of COVID-19. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz says the state economy can't restart without a sharp increase in coronavirus testing. The governor is extending Minnesota's state of emergency for an extra 30 days. He issued his original order a month ago and has used his emergency powers to close schools, bars and restaurants and ordered Minnesotans to largely stay at home. 29 more Minnesotans have tested positive for COVID-19, bringing confirmed cases now to 1,650. Clay County has 40 cases. The death toll remains at 70. You may be finding yourself in the kitchen more than you'd like during this time, but there is an explanation for all of this. The Valley Today's Abby Furchner joins us live this morning with some advice from a Sanford expert. Good morning, Abby. Good morning, Lisa. Stress eating is can described as turning to food to cope with different emotions instead of listening to our body's natural hunger cues. And with COVID-19, not only are people feeling anxious about the unknown of the pandemic, but the changes in many of our schedules could also trigger anxiety. But Sanford Health dietitian Bree Cernsky says, try to think of your daily routine before COVID-19. Even if schedules are changing, whether you are working from home or out, out of work for the time being, maintaining that normalized schedule, because that's going to be helpful in just some sense of normalcy that can allow for more normalized patterns of eating. And I know it's easier said than done, but try to think of what your schedule was like before you may have turned to working from home. Try keeping not only yours, but your kids' uh, eating schedules at regular hours with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then those snacking times as well. Try to keep those at the same too. And I know it's hard to do, but eliminate as much late night snacking as you can during this time can definitely help too. I think we're all uh, listening a little closer this morning. It's affecting all of us. I'm definitely doing more snacking. Great, great segment this morning. Thank you, Abby. Yeah. There's still no sign of a missing Fargo woman who was last heard from last week. Fargo police say 44-year-old Krista Hagen was last seen April 6th. Her picture's up on your screen right now. Take a look. And if you have any information on where she may be, please call Fargo police. A Cass County jail inmate is suing Fargo police for what he claims was excessive force used during his arrest in December. Dennis Merritt says two officers slammed him against a patrol car last year, and he's now asking for $1 million. He was wanted in Clay County for several outstanding warrants out of Clay County. Police say Merritt actually kicked an officer and at one point put a knife to his own throat and threatened to kill himself. Fargo Police Chief David Todd says the department reviewed Merritt's allegations but didn't find anything to support his claims. Let's get our answer now to our question of the morning on Facebook. Today's question, almost all of us say that we can't perform this task that we all did as a kid. Oh, it brought me back to my childhood reading some of your guesses. But the answer, climb a tree. Remember, you can play along every weekday morning by heading to our Valley News Live Facebook page. We here on the Valley today want to thank you for tuning in to watch our coverage and we want to assure you that we are working hard to make sure that you're staying informed during this COVID-19 pandemic. 
There are several ways for you to do that, including valleynewslive.com, our Valley News Live news app, and also on our Valley News Live Facebook page. All for free with no registration required. Remember that today's show and CBS This Morning are just about to start, but the Valley Today rolls on. We'll continue with our live up-to-the-minute news and weather for you right now on the Fargo CW. Have a great day, everyone.